exist. It is in time that we were born, it is in time that we will die. If a human being understands the significance of time, the rules of time, the laws of time, the dharma of time, and is in tune with the dharma of time, he is not just a jaya, he is a vijaya too. He makes it here and he makes it elsewhere. One who is not in tune with the dharma of time, he will get crushed and crumpled by the process of life. Life is just a play of time. The ancient sages of this nation, the ancient seers and yogis of this region looked at time with enormous attention. Our idea of time is essentially because of the way we are connected with the immediate creation around us, which is the planet and the solar system. Today, as we sit here, we call this the night because the planet is rotating. In a few hours, we'll call this midnight. In few more hours, we will call this day, only because the planet is spinning. The spin of the planet and the human body and the human energies and the human possibilities and the human destiny is so deeply entwined. If one does not understand the law that governs this, if one is not in tune with the dharma that governs this, he will be just spinning eternally. You know, if you spin around for some time, then you don't know where you're going. This is the state of most human beings because 
unknowingly they are spinning with the planet and then they don't know where they're going. The Surya Siddhant, which goes back into the Hori of time, estimated to be somewhere around fifteen to twenty-five thousand years ago. He's talking about the speed of light as two thousand two hundred and two yojanas in half a nimisha. One yojana, according to the modern units of measurement, would be nearly nine miles. One nimisha means sixteen by seventy-fifth of a second. If you multiply this, you get… this is the speed of light. He's talking about the speed of light or fifteen thousand years ago. And today, we have arrived at the same numbers with great difficulty with all kinds of instrument. This is by simple observation of how the human system and the solar system functions together. The distances between the sun and the planet, the distances between the moon and the planet, and the way we rotate and the impact it has, all these things have been looked at with great care. Right now the diameter of the sun into 108 equals the distance between the sun and earth. This is today's measurement, it goes exactly like that. The diameter of the moon into 108 equals the distance to the earth. You know why we put 108 beads in you, you must have lost quite a few of them by now. Out of sync. Like this I can go on with all kinds of fabulous fib figures. The most important thing is how the making of the time and the making of the human body are so deeply connected. If you… you know the planet is round and it has a slightly tilted orbit. If you take this orbit and as it travels, as it spins, here it forms a circle. To form this circle, today we know it takes twenty-five thousand nine hundred and twenty years. This is the time taken. This tilt mainly happens because of the gravitational pull of the moon over the earth and for it to exert that pressure continuously to get this uh, axis to form a circle, it takes this many years. And that many years is called as the one cycle of yugas. Twenty-five thousand nine twenty by sixty, because sixty is the number of minutes, sixty is also the number of heartbeats you should have if you are healthy, will turn out to four thirty-two. Four thirty-two is a number that comes up in various uh, cultures, the Norse culture, the ancient Jewish culture, the Egyptian culture, the Mesopotamian culture and very much here is 432. Why this 432 is your heart beats 60 times a minute. If you're in a state of excitement, it may be doing more. If you are in a good health and in good condition, it beats 60 times. So sixty times into sixty, it's three thousand six hundred into twenty-four would be eighty-six thousand four hundred. This is what it would be. If you divide this by two, if you leave this out, it's again four thirty-two. If you take the number of breaths that you're taking per minute, can you check and tell me how many breaths you're taking per minute? If you're not in a state of heavy excitement, you're doing fifteen. If you are in a state of sadhana, you've done lots of sadhana, then you could be twelve, otherwise you will be fifteen. So, fifteen breaths per minute 
means into 60 per hour, that is 900, 24, that is 21,600. There is something called as a nautical mile, which is a real mile. That means when I say the real mile, it has something to do with the planet and the way it is. The other units of measurement that we have created has something to do with the ease with which we can calculate. So one nautical mile literally means, you know there are 360 degrees in a circle, all of you know this. So upon the planet, there are 360 degrees. If this is the planet, if this is the equator, there are 360 going up like this. Let's say if you take this one as one degree, in this there are sixty minutes, it's referred to as minutes, there are sixty minutes. These sixty minutes, that one minute accounts for one nautical mile. So that means the circumference of the earth at the equator is twenty-one thousand six hundred. That's how many breaths you take per day. The planet is not spinning on time, no good at all for us. If you are not in tune with it, still no good for you. I am just trying to make you understand, time is not just a concept that we invented. Time is deep-rooted in the system, in the very way we are made. So, when we go into Mahabharat, there is so much talk about the yugas and how they function, the impact of time on human life. I want you to look at it from a different context. This is not something that somebody thought up. This is a very phenomenal and profound science. Yoga is always deeply involved with this. It is just that we don't believe in propounding theories about it, but by practice we are trying to attune the body to the times and spaces of the creation the way it is. Because without being in tune with this, you… you don't get very far. If you are not riding the time, you will live a mediocre life, probably a very suffering life. Only if you are riding the time, you will live an extraordinary life, which is what a human being and the human brain is designed for. If you look at the orbit of the planet, the planet is here. In the yogic astronomy, we divide this orbit into twenty-seven segments called nakshatras. Each of these divide into four equal sectors called padas or steps, marking the one hundred and eight steps that the sun and the moon take through heaven. These twenty-seven positions of the sun in relation to the earth plays a significant role upon the planet. These twenty-seven represent the faces of the moon from a Purnami to Amavasya and from Amavasya to Purnami. There are twenty-seven segments. So as the planet is traveling, let us say from this nakshatra to this nakshatra, what is happening is, the little moon is making its half a circle. As it goes to the next one, it completes the cycle and as this is happening, the human cycles within the human body are responding and corresponding to that. In a woman's body, it is very obviously there. Every twenty-seven point five five days, a cycle should happen in a woman's body if she has to be perfectly healthy. In the male body, it is happening in a different way. It is not so obvious and so manifest, but it is happening in a different way and the cycle is of a larger span because if it's a larger span and men 
don't have much arithmetic capabilities, they don't count. When was my last cycle? <laughs> that is mainly because of arithmetic problems, but uh, otherwise this is happening. This is happening all the time in the solar system. This is happening in the larger universe with relation to the solar system and it is happening in this. So Pinda and Andanda, the microcosm and the macrocosm, both are playing the same game. But you tell me, who should play whose game? If you think the macrocosm is going to play your game, you will waste your life. If you play their game, your life will be greater beyond your expectations.